So, so now it's uh, time to, uh, to Guy Hagen. So Guy Hagen is uh, the co-author of Thunderstorm. It's a very well-known now software who won the, the previous uh, challenge. Uh, Guy Hagen recently moved to Colorado uh, University. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here today um, to tell you a little bit about Thunderstorm. Um, and as he says, I'm, I was formerly in Prague, uh, where we, we did this work, and now I'm at the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. Um, so as we know, there are several steps involved in analyzing uh, single molecule data, um, and Thunderstorm offers a variety of methods for each of these steps. The methods can be used in any combination, or nearly um, any combination, and each of these different combinations represents a different algorithm. Um, and so some of the, the steps are shown in this flowchart. Uh, we start with image filtering and feature enhancement, and then finding the approximate positions of molecules, which we call detection. Um, and then the subpixel localization and post-processing, like drift correction and so on, and then finally rendering. Um, and these are shown uh, here using some example data. So here's uh, on the left is some raw data, and then there's two examples of the different filters. There's a denoising filter, um, which is just a Gaussian filter in this case, or this bandpass filter based on wavelet transformation, which we call a feature enhancement kind of a filter. Um, and basically what this is, is set up to do is to identify features in the image that are the right size to be single molecules. Um, and then uh, using that to um, find where the molecules are, we then apply uh, a threshold and then finally on the right hand side you can see the, the detected molecules. Um, and this is what the program looks like. It's an open source program for ImageJ. Okay, um, and we can do 2D and 3D analysis with um, um, biplane or astigmatism methods at the moment. Um, and we can also create and evaluate simulations. Um, and we have really extensive documentation. There's a website, including a, a wiki. There's a forum. Um, the software is still under development. Uh, it automatically updates in ImageJ, uh, but you still have to click it. It's not the, the super Fiji kind. Um, and then each of the, the steps that I mentioned are in these kind of sections of the program, so the image filtering and um, subpixel localization and, and so on. And it was published in 2014 in Bioinformatics. Um, we also have help online within the software. If you click on these little blue question marks, it pops up the relevant section of the user manual or uh, supplementary information. On the right-hand side is a page from the, the website and the wiki, and all of those links along there are um, supplementary data or little tutorials or um, so on uh, that help you use the software. Um, and then as, as Sylvia mentioned, we have several different options for each step. So there's seven different uh, filters, or you can also choose to use no filter. Um, three different methods for the detection, different PSF models. Um, there's two non-fitting methods uh, or uh, fitting methods with least squares or weighted least squares or maximum likelihood methods. We have uh, Keith Lidke's multiple fitter uh, or multi emitter fitting analysis that can use either MLE or least squares. And we have statistical tests to determine the proper number of molecules uh, in that case. Uh, and then finally, four different rendering methods. So then as, as Sylvia mentioned, well, out of all of this stuff, how do I know what's best for me? Um, and so we've made a, a default button um, with a, a certain selection of this stuff that is based on a lot of testing that we did with simulated data and real data, including the, the, the challenge data. And this is just a recommendation um, that, that people can use. Um, but more broadly, you know, as you get going in, in this, then you can start to play around with uh, all these different kinds of settings. 
Also, the threshold um, can be just a value, but it can also be based on an expression. And this, uh, we have found, works really reliably, and so that's part of our default settings. Um, and so basically, uh, our approach in the challenge, in the first round of the challenge, was to take the training data sets and run the, the training data with all the different combinations, like 75 different combinations, and then to find the best one um, in terms of the F1 score or, or so on. And then we used that same group of combination of settings for the challenge data. So this is the results table. Um, the data can be imported or exported in many different formats. Um, we have interactive histograms of each parameter. Um, so what's shown on the right here, once you have the results that include the number of molecules in which frame they were in and the number of detected photons and so on, you can then plot a histogram of that. And then uh, in the histogram, you can draw a box um, and then click that apply, apply Roy to filter. And so then it automatically chooses those, uh, that range of values and removes all the molecules outside of that range automatically. Um, and then in the, once you have the results, there are several post-processing methods. Um, there's a density filter to remove molecules that are really far away from any other molecules. Like if you have a background spot over here someplace, these can be removed automatically. Uh, there's two different methods for drift correction, either the correlation method or um, the, uh, using fiducial markers. Both of these also work automatically, so it automatically detects the fiducial markers as spots that don't blink and does the, the correction based on that. Um, and then just briefly something about the simulations. We, can, uh, we have tools for creation and evaluation of simulations, um, and that's shown here. Um, and we can use a density mask and also a background mask. And an example of the density mask is shown on the, on the right. Um, the Siemens star has a different brightness for each spoke. And then each of these brightnesses are interpreted as a different density. Um, and so then you can see that in the result, each of these spokes has a different density of molecules. Um, and then uh, the simulation engine produces a, a stack of images with the blinking molecules in them. And then we have the ground truth for that, which is one table. And then after analyzing the data with thunderstorm, you get the, the results table. And then you can see the, the, the matching between these. So the green ones are the ones that match, and the red ones didn't match. And then it automatically pops up a table with the, the precision and recall and the F1 score and, and this kind of stuff. Um, another thing that I think is really interesting is the idea about creating realistic simulations that are based on measured parameters. So everything in these kind of experiments can be measured. So the number of detected photons, the background, the full width at half max for the molecules, the camera parameters and all that stuff can be measured and then used to initialize the simulation. And in this case, the density mask that we used was a wide field image. Um, and then we have the real um, uh, palm data and the simulated data. And then this allows us to ask a question like, well, how close is the, the real data to uh, the, the simulated data? And this, I think, is a really interesting uh, application. Um, and then uh, there's just an example here of some of the, the different things that we've been working on. On the top is, uh, it's an epithelial cell called an A431 cell, and it's expressing the growth factor receptor ERB3 labeled with the YFP citrine. Um, so we have the wide field image and then the, 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 the single molecule image. And then what, once you have the list of coordinates, uh, you can um, then calculate the density of, of these and make a density map and then overlay that on the wide field image. And this also, I think, is a really neat application because it's information that you can't really get a, another way. That feature is not in Thunderstorm yet. Um, and then on the bottom, we have a, a storm kind of a, of a method where we're doing a two-color labeling of the cell nucleus to look at two different activities within the nucleus. In this case, 
uh, replication of DNA, which we did using EDU, um, Alexa 647 EDU, and then um, 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 uh, transcription of newly synthesized RNA uh, molecules labeled with a fluorouridine probe. Um, and then finally, um, our other project is SIM Toolbox, and this is for structured elimination microscopy, and it has a similar uh, feel as Thunderstorm in that you have several choices for all the different steps in the algorithm, and we have several different, <coughs> excuse me, several different options for optical sectioning, SIM, super resolution SIM, um, also, a SIM using Bayesian estimation, and this was published in Bioinformatics as well. And on the bottom here, these are live cell movies of um, uh, it's a lysosome associated membrane protein labeled with GFP. And so, then finally, I'd just like to thank the Thunderstorm team. Um, Pavel Kshizak uh, developed all of the initial stuff in MATLAB, and then Martin Obesny um, is the real author of Thunderstorm, and um, he continues to develop it to this day. And also, um, Tom Tomasz Lukasz is uh, here now at, at EPFL and was part of the team working on uh, structured illumination. So thank you very much. Question in the, in the audience? No question? Yes. 